busy going backwards. Railways are home to lots and lots of locomotives. Locomotives are a very vital asset to railways, but arguably rolling stock is just as important. Many people do say that without, without locomotives, the rolling stock is simply useless, but I'd say that also goes the other way. Without rolling stock, a railway simply can't function if there's no carriages for the supplies. And of course, I do mean troublesome trucks too. Now, it might be odd to hear an engine defending the troublesome trucks, since they always cause so much trouble. But that's not to say that they account for every single piece of rolling stock on the island. After all, most coaches are very nice towards the other engine. And believe it or not, although they're very uncommon, there are some troublesome trucks that do discern from their very dislikable peers, and actually make pulling trains much easier for other engines. Today's story actually focuses on one of these various rolling stocks, and his name is Toad. He works on the Little Western and is, main, and is a brakeman for that branch line. He mainly pulls trains with Oliver. However, he can be seen pulling other trains with other engines like Donald, Douglas, Doug, and sometimes he can also be seen on the main line in case the other engines are short on brake bands or if Oliver, Doug, or the others pull a train on that branch line. He's very respectful, and he never shortchanges any excuses and never complains as well. Except for one time I'm thinking of. This day, Toad was feeling rather glum, and Brian, a fellow brake fan, decided to cheer him up by asking him a question of... Hello there, Toad. Why the long face? You look really glum. It's nothing, Mr. Brian. I'm just feeling rather bored with life. What is this? Don't tell me you're, you're bored of being sitting around here all day. It's just, I'm always so bored of always going backwards all the time. It, let me explain. Whenever me and Mr. Oliver go on the main line, we always see other engines passing by us by at such high speeds. I've always been so bored whenever I see this because I've always wondered what it's like to go fast and most importantly to go forward. Being a toad brake man, I've never known what that's like unless I've been shunted, but that's not quite the same thing. From what my sisters tell me, Toad, they don't quite feel it the same way, don't they? I mean, don't the passengers distract you from being always going backwards? No, not really. And, oh, here comes Annie and Clarabelle. I'll ask Clarabelle for you right now. Oi, Clarabelle, what's it like going backwards all the time? I feel it's quite fun, Francis. How would you say? You see, Toad, it's not always bad. Look at me, I'm always going backwards all the time. I know, Mr. Brian, but I but it'd be so much more exciting to go forwards for a change instead of always seeing things sliding away from me. Just then, Oliver pulled in. He had to pull a train, and he was looking for Toad. Toad, good thing I found you. We need to pull some rubble away from Ellsbridge Harbor. Oliver noticed Toad's sad expression as he buffered up to him, so we couldn't help but ask him what was wrong. What's wrong, Toad? You look really sad. Toad explained his situation to Oliver. But little did he, Brian, and Francis know, but the other trucks on the, on, underneath the shed heard the whole conversation, and they were furious. Who does that little frog you think he is? Complaining and all, a truck said. I know, that great western pine house is lucky to be able to look after us. Another said. He's meant to be pulling us now, so, let's, so we're trying to teach him a lesson, but we can't find out any way. Every time we try to play a trick on them, he always finds it out and we, and we never fall for it. We don't know what to do. I might have an idea, a truck said. Who does? The trucks asked as they looked back. The voice came from a rusty old ballast truck whose name was Scruffy. Dispatch says that he's taking a train of rubble up to Croven's Gate so they can make more ballast because they're extending the line. That means he has to go over Gordon's Hill. Once he gets to the peak, we're, I'm gonna pull back and all of you as well and we're gonna break his coupling and we'll be going flying down the hill making Toad go forwards and going fast. What do you say, lads? Scruffy asked. The trucks laughed and laughed. they never heard of such a well-planned idea from another truck before. They quickly stopped laughing when Oliver pulled in with Toad. He shunted Toad to the back of the train. 
Well, if it makes you feel better, Toad, I have to pull. I have to go all the way back to Hellsbridge Harbor. I might as well pull you lot backwards, which means you'll be going forward. That made Toad feel a little bit better. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. And with that, Oliver pulled Toad and his train back to Ellsbridge Harbor. Good luck, Toad. Don't and don't forget, you're not an engine. Brian jo- Brian chuckled. But he might feel like one soon. <laughs> Oliver finally made it to Ellsbridge Harbor, where the camping crew were loading his trucks up with ballast and rubble. They were assigned to clearing up the docks for its grand reopening in a few years. They had to make sure the harbor yeah, was fit and stand for its new reopening. As they were loading up, the trucks were making fun of Benny's color and his stature. Just a little higher, Pinky. You might make it halfway. I'm not Pinky! Benny snapped as he tried to push the truck. Ignore him, Benny. He's only trying to rile you up, Bob said. <clears throat> he certainly did that. What's wrong, little machine? You mad that I'm making you mad, Pinky? Huh? You mad that I'm making you mad? Huh? Oi, that's quite enough. If we're gonna go all the way to Kerbin's Gate, I don't want to hear your babbling. You've got that? Yes, yeah, stop by your behind. Don't try any fancy words. Otherwise, me and Benny are gonna show you what a real angry machine is. You got it? The trucks were angry, but they were silent. Anywho, is everything, all my trucks full, Bob? Everything ready to go? Yep, your trucks are loaded, Oliver. You're ready to go. Alrighty then. And with that, Oliver set off to Grove's Gate. Why are you, Lord? Bye, Oliver. Oliver was making wonderful time as he soared down the main line of his train. He whistled at other trains that he passed by. Even Toad seems to forget his whole little thing about going forward. He often enjoyed fast trips going down the main line. However, that all changed as they passed through Wellsworth and up to Gordon's Hill. You see, Oliver didn't have much experience going up Gordon's Hill since he's a branch line engine, so he didn't take into account the weight of his train and the behavior of the truck. As Oliver was making it his way up the hill, the truck decided to act up. Oliver noticed this and was getting annoyed, and so was Toad. Keep in line, you lot. I don't want any trouble going up the hill. The truck giggled and held back as he said this. On my mark, hold back as hard as you can so we can break the cup from here. Scruffy said. The troublesome truck giggled and laughed in anticipation as they were going up the hill, waiting to trip. As Oliver made his way around the bend and up to the peak of the hill, it all happened. One second, he was coupled to his train, and then the next, the coupling snapped, and his train was rolling down the hill. Oh no! cried Oliver. Brake blocks and buffers, what's going on? Toad wailed. We're making your wish come true, Toad! The trucks yelled. Follow the leader! Scruffy said, as they rolled all the way down the hill, at a tremendous speed. Toad thundered through Wellsworth and passed Boko, fizzling fuses. Oliver quickly gave chase. He had to catch Toad no matter what. He was actually moving so fast he was rattling and shaking. Amazingly, Toad was actually starting to have a lot of fun. It was exhilarating going through the wide bends at a very fast rate, but that quickly changed. While this was happening, I was headed down the main line with stopping goods to Barrow, and he, Toad was heading down the same line. Oh no! Look out, Mr. Joey! Oh my goodness! A quick thinking signalman leapt over to the point and switched Toad onto the through track of the main line. What are you doing, Toad? I'm having a frightening experience, that's for sure! Just after that, I heard Oliver's whistle, and he thundered by me, just like Toad had. Sorry, Joey, I can't stay and explain. I have to catch Toad! Well, that's the last time I wake up late. Toad wasn't finding it so much fun anymore. He thundered down the line and was terrified after he almost crashed into me. But there was worse to come. At Crosby, James was waiting with a big passenger train. He had no idea about Toad and that he was speeding down the line. 
Toad braced himself for another crash, but luckily the signalman at the dairy contacted the signalman at Crosby so that they could change the points ahead of time. The coaches and passengers were dumbstruck, and so was James as he saw Toad zoom by. I'm sorry, James! What in fizzling fireboxes is going on? Help! Save me! Toad begged. Sorry, James. No time to explain. Huh. First duck, now all of us. You Great Western kids never give me a break, do you? Meanwhile, Gordon and Lily were stuck at Ellsbridge. Gordon was passing by with the express, but had to stop at Ellsbridge to let some passengers off. And he was cross. Those troublesome gnats really outdo themselves sometimes, and delaying my train for their behavior, disgraceful. Well, there's nothing much we can do about it, Gordon, so complaining really is- Help! Oh, oh my, my giddy aunt! Someone get me off the main line, please! A little did Toad know that he was actually diverged under the line leading to the Ellsbridge Harbor, and he'd soon be stopped. Meanwhile at the harbor, the Kandu crew were still cleaning up the mess. They were fixing up a lot of tracks around the area, and Lofty was lifting up some new tracks on the bridge so that they could fix them. Very well, Lofty. You can lower them down now. Are you sure, Bob? I really can't see anything. Yes, Lofty, I'm sure. Just drop your hook down then. But before he could say anything, they heard a rumbling. Bob looked over to the right side of the bridge and was horrified. Good glory! Lofty, move! What? Oh dear! Lofty shouted. Oh dear, I'm gonna crash again, Toad yelled. Rocky quickly threw himself into reverse and made it out of under the bridge just in time. Look out! We haven't put Buffett yet! Muck yelled. The end of the track the Toad was headed down was almost finished. They just had to put buffers, but they didn't finish it in time, so it was small wonder what happened next. Everyone at the docks were silent. Oliver was just around the corner. He rushed into the harbor super fast. When Oliver made it to the harbor, he screeched to a halt. <sighs> Sorry for the intrusion. Is everyone okay? Well, we're all okay. He just almost hit Lofty. Are you okay, Lofty? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Although, I'm more worried about Toad. Yeah, he dove right into the sea after he crashed. I don't think he's okay. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go down to Napford and raise the alarm. Try to get Harvey and Rocky here. In the meantime, you lot try to get Toad and his lot out of the ocean. Don't worry, Oliver. You can count on us, Bob said. Thank you very much, Bob, Oliver said as he rushed off to Napford. Very well, team. Can we fix it? Yes, we can! Yeah, I think so. Bob and his machines got to work right away, pulling the trucks out of the water. It was a time-consuming job that got Bob, the workmen, and the machines very, very wet. Pulling the heavy stone trucks out of the water was very difficult. And not every attempt was a complete success. But, however, there were a few times that they actually managed to get a truck completely intact out of the water. And when a truck managed to get out of the water completely intact, they were either put aside to be re-railed later, or taken off to the scrapyard in case they were too damaged. A while later, Oliver came back with Douglas in tow, and a breakdown train. He couldn't quite get Harvey and Rocky because they were going under repairs, so this was the best thing he could find. It took until sunset for the mess to finally be cleared up enough to tow Toad back on the rail. The workmen were attaching a long cable attached to a crane that went from the shore down into the ocean to Toad. They had to swim underwater to attach the cable to him. Once the cables were attached, the chief workman went up to Douglas and told them to pull. Right, Gio, the final cables have been attached. Now you need to pull hard. He's wedged inside of the sand very deep. You'll have to pull very hard to get him out. We've laid sand all over the tracks to provide extra grip for you two. Aye, sir. We'll pull our bloody best. I don't care if my axle snaps in half, I'm pulling Toad out of the water. Right then, on the count of three. One, two, three, pull! 
Oliver and Douglas's wheels screeched and slipped on the sandy rails. They pulled as hard as they could to get towed out of the water. However, they were pulling. The rope pulled and pulled more out of the water and onto land. Once Toad got dislodged out of the sand, he started to pull up quicker and quicker. Everybody watched anxious, worried for Toad. Oliver and Douglas towed faster and faster. And sooner than later, a white root popped out of the water. Later, a gray boxy body. And soon, Toad was out of the water and back on land. Everyone cheered and applauded Douglas and Oliver for pulling Toad out of the water. Toad sat there, very dirty and full of sand. Well done, Douglas and Oliver. You did it. Indeed. Thank you, Douglas. And thank you, Bob, and your outstanding team for helping clear up the wreckage. It's no problem, Oliver. That's what we're meant to do. Fix and help others. Aye, let's get Toad back to the steamworks so he can be repaired. Toad was lifted on a flatbed that day and taken to the steamworks the next day. Oliver noticed his sad expression again and asked him what was wrong. What's wrong, Toad? You're sad again. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you out there, Mr. Oliver. For what? The trucks pushed you down the hill, the guard jumped off, and hit and record shows that your brake shoes were locked off. There's no possible way it was your fault. The trucks overheard me talking about how I wanted to go forward, so they tricked me and made me go down the hill very, very fast. That's why they pushed me. I'm sorry, Mr. Oliver. Oliver smiled. Oh, 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 don't blame yourself, Toad. You just wanted to know what it was like doing something different. I can't blame you for that. At all. Oh, thank you for understanding, Mr. Oliver. Indeed. I trust you won't be going forward too much from now on, are you? No, not quite. Nowadays, Toad is more careful about what he says around the trucks. He doesn't fancy going forwards or as fast anymore after that terrifying experience, and the trucks never quite fool him anymore. He still keeps the trucks in mind and is a very useful brake then to this day. However, his crash would have repercussions on Oliver, and I don't mean physically, but after letting the trucks slip, so, slip so easily away from him, the other trucks in the yard started to tease him as they made him, as they made him an easy target for tricks. And I'm sorry to say that one of these tricks would catch up to him. But that is a story for another day.